after discussing the uh, MVPs, the impact players for Alabama, and its win over Louisiana on last week, we're back from the break here on In My Own Words, the podcast, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, Stephen Smith, as we transition into the Hogs, the Arkansas Razorbacks, a Southeastern Conference program in which Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide will travel this week to DWR Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville to face the Hogs. And this is a program that, under the likes of Houston Nutt, Bobby Petrino, and Brett Bielema, it was a team that you could depend on, count on, physicality, toughness, scrappy play, and a program that had some talent on it. You look at quarterback-wise, Ryan Mallett, Brandon Allen, Austin Allen, Casey Dick, all of these guys coming through Arkansas, running back, Peyton Hillis, Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, Raleigh Williams III, Alex Collins, Jonathan Williams, Dev Waley, got talent, wide receiver, Drew Morgan, Jared Cornelius, Keon Hatcher, tight end, Jeremy Sprinkle, Hunter Henry, defensively, not a lot of big name players, but still, when you looked at Arkansas, you saw toughness, you saw physicality, you saw grittiness, chippiness, all of the blue collar-esque qualities that make for a pretty decent, pretty solid Southeastern Conference program. And uh, at this point, under first-year head coach Chad Morris, it's trying to get over the growing pains of having a new guy distancing itself from Bielema. Though uh, Bielema had some success in Arkansas, he could not elevate the level of play the way the Razorback fans would have liked him to. And now you bring in a new guy with fresh ideas, fresh insight. And Chad Morris is going to get there, but it's going to take him some time in doing so. But in looking at some of the impact players for the Hogs at 1-4 and four on the season, played a bit better last week against Texas A&M, despite a 24-17 to 17 loss. But number one straight out of the gate, I have running back Devwa Whaley, the junior, out of Beaumont, Texas. And uh, I have an asterisk by his name because he's coming off a concussion, did not play against Texas A&M. And I remember during Morris's press conference, he talked about how the team taking Whaley in stride week by week, day-to-day process, trying to figure out where is he mentally, physically, can he play, can he give us what we need in order to challenge, compete, hold our own against the likes of Alabama. You need Whaley in this game. The 5'11", 209-pounder, very compact back here, 53 carries, 231 yards, two touchdowns on the season prior to this year, 2016 and 2017, some pretty good numbers for Whaley. 2016, I remember this guy behind Raleigh Williams III had 110 carries, 602 yards, three scores. Last year, had better touchdown numbers with seven on 127 carries for 559 yards. One of the things that, if he should play, that Chad Morris is probably bringing to Whaley's mind is, he's probably saying, Devwa. This is the same Alabama team. I know Big Bad Bama, Nick Saban, king of the block. No one can challenge Nick. No one can dethrone Nick. But this is the same Bama defense, Devois, that gave up 111 yards rushing to Trey Regas of uh, Louisiana. Raging Cage is back. Little insignificant back. Trey Regas of Louisiana here had 16 carries, Devois. For 111 yards, Devois, one touchdown against Alabama, Devois, averaged 6.9 yards a carry, did not lose a yard on the ground, Devois. This is Trey Regas from Louisiana doing this against big, bad Bama defense, the mecca of college football inside Brian Denny. 
Chad Morris is thinking, Devwa, if you can play after seeing what Trey Regas did the week before, don't care if it was against the second and third stringers, Devwa, because this is the same Alabama fan base that says, what? Our second, third, fourth string guys are as good or as great as most people's starters. Our second, third, fourth, fifth team guys can start anywhere else in college football. And it's because of that statement right there. Chad Morris is looking at Dev Wild Whaley going, hey, if Trey Regas can put up over 100 yards against Bama, you're healthy this week. You can play this week. Son, you got a chance to put up that type of production. Going to my number two guy for Arkansas in preparation for Alabama, I look at quarterback Ty Story, the junior. This young man just screams Razorback quarterback, and here's why. Tough dude, hardcore worker, blue-collar player, may not be the most explosive guy in the world, but can make plays if given the opportunity. This was a young man that backed up Austin Allen at quarterback in, 27, in 2016, excuse me, Austin's senior year, that being Ty Story's freshman year. So Story right now, 6'2", 215 pounds. He's completed 44 of 87 passes. That's 50.6%. 631 passing yards. He's got four touchdowns to four interceptions. Played pretty well against the Aggies. Lost the game, but played pretty well. 14 of 26 completions, 193 yards, one touchdown. Did turn the ball over. You can't afford those turnovers against the Tide, but he did also have a pick in that game. But when you look at Ty Story, the young man was a four-star prospect Coming from Rivals, 247, 247 Sports, ESPN, and Scout. So basically, every recruiting network with a pulse had this young man as a four-star. The guy can play. Typical Arkansas quarterback. Tough nose, blue collar, hard worker, doesn't get you beat with too many bad plays. Not real, real explosive, but can make throws down the field if you need him to. And in a game in where your crowd's going to be hostile, a lot of folks are going to be packed out inside DWR, you look for a strong performance from Ty Story, the junior, number two on this list. Can he be able to stand in the pocket, feel his way, connect with guys downfield? Can the Arkansas's offensive line hold up against the likes of Quentin Williams, who's having an amazing year? Isaiah Bugs, who's starting to come on strong. Raekwon Davis, who we have reached the meat of the schedule. Look for the Giants' Sequoia to come back to life here. Uh, at linebacker, Christian Miller's turned up. Anthony Jennings has turned up. And the inside guys, Mac Wilson, Dylan Moses, need to fit those gaps better in the run game, but have both done a pretty good job of affecting quarterbacks this season. So, can Arkansas's offensive line hold up and protect the entire story? That's not the issue, but he's number two. Going on down for number three here, sticking with offensive guys. Give me a Michael Petway wide receiver junior here. Where's number 16? A lot of guys I saw Tuesday in practice for the Crimson Tide, a couple of walk-on guys wearing number 16 uh, for the scout team emulating the Michael Petway in practice. This young man, 6'2", 219 pounds, redshirted his freshman year in 2015. I wanted to put Jared Cornelius here. I really did. But Cornelius has been going through some injuries. He's, he's only played in three games this season, the senior. So, uh, Michael Petway, 12 catches this year, 179 receiving yards, leading the team in both categories. Three touchdowns leads the team in that category. He's averaging 14.92 yards per catch. So basically 15 yards a snag for Petway. He's played in 24 career games. So that's the guy that can stretch the field. That's the guy that can take the top off a of defense. He's got some other guys along with him, but that's the guy that a lot of the Alabama players were wearing that jersey number 16 to represent a Michael Petway. Now, Alabama's secondary this season 
has done a pretty good job of shutting down a team's main target. Against Louisville, it shut down Des Fitzpatrick. Against Ole Miss, it shut down the likes of A.J. Brown. Against Texas A&M, it shut down Jamon Osborne that many people could say is a bigger version of Christian Kirk. So this week, you've got LaMichael Petway and Alabama with the likes of Trayvon Diggs, Patrick Sertain, Deontay Thompson, and the no-fly zone looking to shut down Petway. But he's number three. Going to number four, we finally get to some Arkansas defense. And another asterisk beside this guy, if he plays, suffered an injury during Arkansas's first game of the year. Hopefully he's able to play in this game. And that's none other than linebacker Dre Greenlaw, the senior. Greenlaw, leadership guy on this Hogs roster. He's got 31 tackles this year through three games. Five tackles for loss and a quarterback hurry. Can play the Mike linebacker position at 6'2", 227. Can also play the weak side position due to he's got some quickness, some strong footwork. Can play the pass coverage lane pretty well there. He's number four. Should he play, he's got a ton of experience. Rounding us out at number five, we go to... uh, the defensive line of Wu Pig Sui, where we pick up Armand Watts, the senior. He's got 17 tackles on the year, sixth on the team, four and a half tackles for loss, second behind, of course, Dre Greenlaw. He's got a team high four sacks and two quarterback hurries. But along with Armand Watts, I'm going to throw in an honorable mention. The honorable mention is McTelvin Agent. McTelvin Agem's got 15 tackles. He's got seven quarterback hurries, a team high. He's got three and a half tackles for loss and one sack. So the main guy, Armand Watts, fifth, rounding this out. But I threw in the honorable mention of McTelvin Agem due to he's got a team high of seven quarterback hurries. So running back through this again for the Hogs, that need to be able to compete, put together a good product against the Tide. I know Nick Saban called this a trap game, and he's supposed to do that. He's the head coach. Can't allow your guys to get complacent. Can't allow your guys to rest on their laurels. you got to put out different things in the atmosphere to keep that edge, to keep that intensity. Alabama been intense all week as Nick Saban coined this a trap game. But let's be honest, this is an Arkansas team trying to get over the growing pains of leaving Brett Bielema, bringing in the new of Chad Morris. He'll get there, but it's going to take him some time. Going back over the impact players, though. Number one, Dev Watt Whaley, running back. Number two, Ty Story, quarterback. Number three, LaMichael Petway, wide receiver. Number four, Dre Greenlaw, linebacker, should he play? Same with Whaley, should he play? And number five, Armand Watts with the honorable mention being McTelvin Agent. As always, ladies and gentlemen, check out the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app for the Android, for the iPhone, iPad, iPod. If you want the best in Crimson Tide coverage from stories to videos to audio, Everything encompassing Bama. Check it out. TD Alabama Mag, the app, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, in the palm of your hands there. Going to our final break here on In My Own Words. When we get back, we sit down with a good friend of mine, Pat Jenkins, who covers the Razorbacks for On the Hill Sports Talk Radio with Pat Jenkins out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. He's going to come on for a little behind the enemy line segment as we talk more hogs on the other side of the break. Don't touch that dial, folks. We're coming back. 